bike. So, over my 20 years in the army, I have noticed five key mistakes young soldiers make on a day-to-day -day basis, and it hasn't really changed. But I was given some advice from my dad as soon as I joined up, because he was a, he was a serving policeman, and so it's kind of the same type of institute as the military. So I thought I want to give you this advice because you might not have any people in your social demographic or anything like that that can give you the advice that I'm going to give you now. So I am just going to go into one of my classrooms in work to to film these. But this first point couldn't wait. I had to get it out. And the first point is all I see is a lot of young soldiers drinking cans of Monster and eating junk food that they buy from the naffy. Monster is the worst thing in the world that you can drink. It's absolutely horrendous. You may as well just tip 20 sachets of sugar down your throat by the time you have a can of Monster. And whenever I finish teaching a lesson, I'll just like hear, if the guys were going on a break, I'll just hear like an orchestra of cans opening. Just just people drinking Monster, and I'll ask them why they're drinking it, and they'll and they'll say that oh they they're feeling tired, they're feeling tired because that's the second can of Monster of the day, and the first can that they had for breakfast, they're now feeling the effects of a massive come down. Don't drink Monster; it is not a good drink. Plus, it just rots your teeth, and it strips the lining inside your stomach and your internal organs and you'll be at the dentist more times that you'll be in the lessons it's horrendous and junk food's exactly the same when you go to the NAFI the Navy Army uh, Air Force Institute is kind of a it's kind of a term that's kind of out of date now it's basically just a shop all they said is junk food in there so just go on the weekend go to Tesco get what you need for the week don't be buying junk food from from the shops on camp and certainly don't be drinking monster i see people drink a can of monster before fizz and a can of monster after they've had a fizz session i'm like what you did that is no help whatsoever as soon as that first sip of monster crosses your lips the dehydration process begins it is not good drink water drink drink orange juice diluted with water with a pinch of salt in just don't drink Monster. Plus, it gets you fat. It gets you so fat. It's very rare that you will see someone who's in amazing shape drinking four cans of Monster a day. It just doesn't happen. It's calorie full, full of sugars, really bad for you. And it just won't help you whatsoever. It won't give you more energy because you just think it's giving you more energy. And then your body gets used to it. And then after that, you need to drink more cans of Monster and it's highly addictive. And then when you try and come off Monster, you then got, start getting Monster withdrawals. So you start getting headaches and your body feels strange like you've been doing heroin for the past two years. Stay away from Monster. It is not a good culture to get into and stay away from junk food. Eat bananas, fresh fruit, Eat well when you go to the cookhouse as well. So I had to get that one out for point one. Stay away from monster and junk food because I just see too many people eating and drinking that crap. Now, I'm going to go in and I'm going to get on to point two. Right, point number two, buying a car and spending way too much money on a car. So you start getting paid, superb getting 12, 13, 1400 pound a month when you first start off. So what people do then is go and buy a really expensive car that they're paying 700 pound a month for. And they get this amazing car and they're like, well, I can afford it. I've got no other outgoings. So I'm gonna put all my money into a car that will depreciate as soon as you drive it off the forecourt. Then what they have to do is insure it. That might be because they've got no, no claims bonus whatsoever, that's another 200 pound a month, say. So already they might be paying between eight and 900 pounds 
just for the car. That might leave them with £400 for the rest of the month. Then you have to fuel the car, put money in. That might be another £100 or £200 a month. You have to get the car serviced. That's expensive if you're buying an expensive car. You have to get the car taxed. And also, what's not included in here, which happens all the time, is that cars break down. Cars break down all the time. So that's more money. So your 1,400 quid a month could be going solely on your car, which then means you have to go and get a loan so you can eat for the rest of the month. All your mates might be going out on the source, you can't do it you put all your money into, into your car. And then if you do go out, then you can't afford to buy fuel for it so you can drive it around, which is what you wanted to do in the first place. So do not go out and buy an expensive car. Buy a car that meets your means. Go and get a second hand car, go and build up all those years of no claims bonuses cars are not an investment they're not an investment and no one cares what car you drive no one cares whatsoever when i started out in the army i had a really old renault clio that was a hand-me-down from my dad to my sister to me and i just kept it going it was already paid off i didn't care what people thought i did not care one bit i was paying like a hundred pound a month on insurance and that was it yeah there might have been other people driving around with beamers but when i come on to the next point in a minute you're going to see why i did not care about what car i drove and you shouldn't care about what car you drive either when you get late later on in life and you've got more money and you can afford it get a nicer car that's absolutely fine when you're starting off just get, a, just get a rubbish car that is roadworthy, won't cost you a lot of fuel, won't cost you a lot in insurance, and get you to A to B, and in the six, cause that's all the other amazing cars will do. They, they both just do exactly the same thing. They go on the road and they move, that's it. So do not spend all your money on a good car, which I see a lot of soldiers doing, wasting your money, and I'll tell you why now in point three. Right, point number three, budget your money. Work out how much you've got and then try and put that into some form of budget. Look, I know I sound like an old man here, but when you start, when you're young, it's a lot easier to do when you're older. So therefore, look, th this, is, this isn't a plethora of information on here. I'm just giving you a couple of ideas to budget for so you're not wasting your money. You, When you join the army, you'll be getting paid every single month, regardless of a pandemic like we've had now, regardless of whether you're injured, regardless of whether you're passing tests, regardless of whether you're passing fitness tests. You're going to get paid until you either leave or you get kicked out. So these are the sort of things that's most important that you need to budget for when you join up. I'm gonna start off with adventure training. You are gonna get a lot of opportunities to go abroad, skiing, rock climbing, mountain biking, rugby, cricket, football, all types of sports, all types of adventurous training. So therefore, budget that. Through training, you know you're probably not going to get much of a chance to go on adventure training. So therefore, right, this £20, it's so cheap adventure training as well. The army will pay for almost everything. You might have to put a tiny contribution in. 20 quid a month over the year is your 240 quid. That's probably the largest contribution you're going to have to put into some form of adventure training. 20 quid a month is next to nothing. This is where you want the majority of your money going. You want to start saving for a house as soon as you join the army. Start saving for the house. The benefit is this. You get a mortgage when you're young. You can either rent that house out so other people are paying the mortgage or you keep the house and the army will pay for you to drive home to that house. 
to check on it, etc. You will get a monthly allowance that you can put towards that mortgage. So save for a house straight away. And the beauty of saving for a mortgage or having a mortgage is that when people try and pressure you to go out boozing and you don't really feel like it, if you just say, I'm saving for a mortgage or I've got a mortgage and I can't afford it, that's it done. They won't pressure you anymore. If you say, oh, I don't feel like it, peer pressure constantly, oh, come on, come on, let's go out, let's go out. As soon as you mention the word mortgage, you gain instant respect as well. And you'll also have some real self-respect. That's where your money should be going if you haven't got any outgoings. Buy your houses as soon as you can. If you've got to save, save like mad. Also what the army will do is an army help to buy scheme. They will also give you money for the down payment that automatically comes out of your pay. It's an absolute win-win situation. Get a house straight away. Budget for your food. Everywhere is pay as you dine. So work out after a couple of months how much you're going to need for food each month. Budget for that. Social, you're in the army, you're still going to be expected to go out essentially and you don't want to be that guy who stays in his room all the time because you'll start resenting the army. So still budget for it, budget to go out once or twice a month and enjoy yourself, okay? Or what you can do is budget to go out every weekend but two of those weekends you won't drink. You just go on the Diet Cokes but you're still making those bonds with the guys and girls around you. And then you've got a budget for a car. However much money you've got left at the end of that month, you need to budget for the car should you be able to drive. Plus the army will put you through your category B license as well. So like a car essentially is somewhere on your list, but it shouldn't be the first thing that all of your money goes into, like I said on the last one. But the main thing is, is budgeting. What you don't want to do straight away is start taking out loans, taking out payday loans because all your money's going on absolute tripe that you haven't thought about um, and get your money into property. Or if you want to, if you're not interested in buying a property, get your money into ISAs um, and other saving schemes like that. So tip three, budget, budget well. Right, this next one is about overcoming obstacles. I see a lot of young soldiers, they'll hit an obstacle in their career. They perhaps won't get promoted or they're in a job they don't particularly like. They've got a posting that they don't particularly like and automatically they think, right, I'm getting out, I'm signing off because they think it'll never change. It will change. I, I've had some difficult postings, um, some difficult times in the army, but I've never once thought about signing off until I come to the end of my career. I joined the army and I thought, right, I'm gonna do 22 years, I'm getting out and I'll be young enough to start another career. What you've got to remember is that be reflective. Why do you think you didn't get promoted? Have you done enough? Don't think that you should get report, uh, you should get promoted because you're a much better bloke than the other bloke. They might have done more than you to get promoted. So when you hit an obstacle, say you get a posting that you didn't want, you're only gonna be there two years anyway, more than likely, then you can get out and you don't know what that posting is going to be like yet. So whenever you meet an obstacle and you think, why well, I'm going to sign off because I don't enjoy it, cut the deep breaths, give it a couple of months, and then make the decision. Talk to people that have been in that posting, that have moved on from it. Talk to other people that might not have got promoted. Just because you haven't got promoted, it really isn't the end of the world. You're in a good community, you're getting paid money, you're going all over the world, you're gonna see all of, um, most of the world throughout your career if you're lucky. So whenever you meet an obstacle, be reflective, 
have a look how to overcome that obstacle. Don't listen to naysayers that might just say, oh, I'm signing off because of this, I'm signing off, and then you decide to sign off. Just be calm, look at the good things, then look at the bad things, weigh it all up, then make the decision. But do not just sign off straight away, because it's very difficult, once you click that button to get out of the army, it's very difficult to then reverse that decision you made, or also to get back in. Right, last one, volunteer. Just volunteer for things. You won't want to, I know you won't want to, some people don't, but if you're a single serving soldier, just go round, volunteer for things when you get asked. You'll probably get a corporal or a sergeant saying, oh, I need a volunteer, I need a volunteer. Just volunteer. So this story is not a lie. My one mate used to volunteer for absolutely everything. And that went on for a year. He used to play enemy, go on exercise all the time. But he just used to love volunteering. And he used to take all the rubbish jobs off people. Anyway, one day the troop corporal comes out um, and says, right, I need a volunteer. So my mate slings his hands up. And they're like, right, come into the office, please. Goes into the office. They're like, well done for volunteering. You're now going to Australia for four months on an exchange program. So I am telling you now, just volunteer, get the most out of the army. And the good thing about it is you'll meet loads of people that you would never have met if you didn't volunteer. You need to get the most out of the military whilst you're young, because it's harder to get the most out of it as you get older. And that is the truth. So those are my five points that I see young soldiers and the mistakes that they make. If you've got any quest questions, give me a shout and hopefully you enjoyed the video. Take care.